It's official, Washington Mutual Bank has failed. I'll tell you what that means and what's next for WAMU coming up next in a special extended audio only edition of Two Minute Finance. Hello, I'm Bobby Lee. Tonight, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or the FDIC, announced that it has taken over Washington Mutual Bank and has sold it to J.P. Morgan Chase. It is considered the largest bank failure in U.S. history. So what happened? The company was heavily invested in subprime mortgages. Because of the declining home values, WAMU was stuck with an investment that was now worth less than they had originally lent. In order to make sure they had enough cash on hand to make up for losses on their mortgage investments and meet their obligations to depositors like you and I, the bank tried to seek capital, also known as raising more money. They did so last spring and raised $7 billion from a private investment company. Unfortunately, their mortgage losses continued to mount. As of tonight, WAMU had $227 billion in real estate loans, $307 billion in assets, and $188 billion in deposits. Though, since September 15th, depositors have taken out $16.7 billion in deposits, or about 9% of the bank's deposits. This tipped WAMU from being a solvent bank, or able to meet all of its obligations, to being insolvent, or not being able to meet all of its obligations. Tonight, the FDIC took over WAMU and immediately sold part of the company to J.P. Morgan Chase, also known as JPMC, for $1.9 billion. So what does this sudden transition mean? If you're a WAMU bank customer, this means nothing for you. JPMC has assumed all deposits, including uninsured deposits, meaning even if you had more than the $100,000 FDIC insurance limit in deposits with WAMU, JPMC will honor your deposits. You will receive every dollar you had originally deposited in WAMU. Come Friday morning, it will be business as usual. If you're a WAMU borrower, you are not off the hook, no, no, no. You still have to pay back your loans and mortgages. Keep sending those payments to the same address on time every month. If you're a WAMU employee, the future is less certain. JPMC has indicated that it would close less than 10% of the bank's branches, so there would be some small job losses in the retail banking side, but the future of other divisions of WAMU remains uncertain. If you're a WAMU stockholder or bondholder, you are basically wiped out, unfortunately. Because JPMC bought WAMU from the FDIC and not the shareholders, and because they only bought the assets of WAMU, the stock is basically worthless and their bonds will not be repaid. So if you're looking at the timeline of events, WAMU failed first, rendering the stock worthless, then the FDIC took over the bank, then JPMC bought the bank all in one night. In the hierarchy of who gets repaid after a bankruptcy, shareholders and bondholders sit at the bottom of the list. So what's next for WAMU? As mentioned earlier, JPMC has indicated they would close less than 10% of WAMU's branches. As long speculated, the company has always wanted to enter the retail banking market in the West Coast, where Washington Mutual dominates. As of right now, JPMC's retail banking network is only located in the East Coast. As of this moment, the combined bank is now the largest bank in the United States, with 5,400 branches in 23 states. That is, until Bank of America completes their acquisition of Merrill Lynch in the near future. So if you're a WAMU customer, you'll probably have greater access to your money in the near future, coast to coast. The only question now is what's going to happen to all of WAMU's current and future losses? Will the government hold on to the losses and idea float up with the current bailout plan? Will they help private companies take over the bad debt? Who knows? The only thing for certain is that JPMC will take a $31 billion write-down and sell an additional $8 billion in stock to cover themselves against future losses. For more information on the WAMU bank failure and the subsequent acquisition by JPMC, visit our website at 2minutefinance.com. I'm Bobby Lee. Thanks for listening.